go. Um, well, you know, credit the fight of our team. Um, that certainly wasn't a Picasso out there. Um, I don't think anybody would misinterpret that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, there was definitely some good things that we did periodically throughout the game in all three phases, um, you know. Give them credit. They kept fighting. We got ahead of them, you know, and, you know, they just kept coming and kept, you know, trying to, to close the gap there. And, um, you know, I thought our football team kind of hung in there. You know, Hoy went in there after Jimmy, um, you know, got injured and, you know, helped us, you know, move the football, you know, on a couple drives and, and did his job uh, for the most part. Um, but, you know, they're never easy. You know, they're never easy. And we knew we'd get their best fight. Um, we know we have a lot to clean up and a lot to do better, but uh, proud of our team for continuing to battle and fight and uh, put ourselves, you know, where we're at now. And now it's it's going to be about, you know, getting better moving forward. <clears throat> a couple of things, Josh. Uh, yep. Update on, uh, any update on Jimmy? I do else? not. I know he left, and, and everybody knows that he left. Right. Um, they're just doing tests, you know, and, and just making sure that, you know, they take care of all that stuff. So I do not have an update on Jimmy. Secondly, um, second straight week where the defense comes up with basically the, the game clinching or saving, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, play. Um, the progress on that side of the ball uh, yeah. that you see. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. You know, I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of guys playing and, uh, you know, we're <laughs> scrapping and clawing. Um, you know, we, we gave some things up today, you know, more in the middle of the game, I think, anything else, um, but battled. Um, you know, and that's what a defense, you know, when you play defense, you know, and your punter puts them back there, um, you know, and then I think we had the holding penalty, you know, you, you that's where you want to be, you know. Um, you know, you want to go ahead and close the game if you can. Um, and I thought they did a great job of executing at the end. <clears throat> Josh, you guys are, are three and three after this win and obviously have an opportunity next week to get over 500. Um, how do you kind of – you had a chance for this team to kind of bounce back after the losing streak early in the season? Yeah, I mean, every week's a different week in our league. Um, every game's, to me, you can you can win them all and you can you can lose them all if you don't coach and play well, well enough. And, and if you coach and play well enough, you're going to be right there uh, competing with most teams, you know. And, um, you know, I thought we, you know, we had a couple that didn't necessarily go our way as we started the season. And, you know, and but the guys never stopped working the same way. Um, if anything, we've worked harder. We've done more. We've put more time and effort into certain things to try to improve and give ourselves an opportunity to get better and, you know, make progress, you know. And obviously there's more progress to be made. You know, we, we certainly know that we have to be able to, you know, score in a red zone more than what we did. We have to be able to, you know, do some of those things better, uh, avoid the penalty situation, kind of got it bit us at the wrong time, the critical situation. Um, and so we got to do a better job of that. But um, proud of the fight. And, you know, again, it's three and three. Nobody's qualified for anything at this point in time. And we're six games in. Everybody else is too. And we got a long way to go. <clears throat> Josh, two quick questions. The first one, you mentioned the red zone. Can you identify what you think the issues are uh, keeping you guys from scoring touchdowns? Yeah, I mean, there's not one thing, you know. I mean, you got to do a lot of things right in, in there. And, um, you know, and whether, like I said, we had a couple holding penalties that put you in first and 20 or second and 20, and that's obviously a difficult situation to be in. We missed some opportunities, um, you know, and we, we, we just have to be able to capitalize, whatever it is, run or pass, uh, play penalty free, and be able to capitalize on the opportunities that we have down there, you know. I mean, there's less space, uh, which means your execution has to be better uh, than it is at you know, the 50-yard line, you know, and right now we're not doing a good enough job. <clears throat> Secondly, Michael Mayer really displayed the player that you thought you were getting. Would you talk about him and his maturation, please? Yeah, he's getting better every week. Um, you know, he's he works at it, man. He's got a great work ethic, um, a great attitude and mindset. He wants to be really good at everything, you know, blocking, running with the ball, catching, getting open in the routes, pass protection. Um, you know, and he's just every week is, is like another step forward. Uh, I think he's gaining confidence in himself. Um, and, and we needed some players to, you know, when, when you play a covered scheme like that, that really dictates, hey, we're going to double 
certain people, you know. You got to have the people that aren't getting doubled, you know, make some plays and step up and do some things in a passing game. And I thought we had, you know, Trey had the big one down the middle and Michael and Hoop, you know, had a few, you know, that were big, uh, I thought, third down plays. And uh, they don't make anything easy on you. And uh, we needed some contributions from those guys. <clears throat> you mentioned some of the frustration of not being able to cash in sometimes in the red mm -hmm. zone. And is it more frustrating or encouraging that you where you are where you are in spite of the fact that maybe you haven't been able to throw your best punch in? I'm always going to be a glass half full on our team, you know. Um, you know, you keep battling, scrapping, fighting, and find ways to win when you don't play perfect. Um, I have to look at that as a positive, you know. Um, that, you know, like I said, it wasn't a Picasso, but you do the things necessary to win, um, try to take care of the football as best you can, try to, you know, play as penalty free as possible, play decent in the kicking game, win field position, um, you know, and then make the plays at the end of the game you have to make if the game's a close one. And, you know, I mean, look, I, there's nobody in this room that would love for this to be more of a 20 point victory than, you know, me. I think I'm aging by the week, but um, it is what it is. We'll take them. Josh, I know <clears throat> last week you mentioned that you don't want the emotion. You just want to keep playing, stick to the process. But still, winning breeds confidence. Mm -hmm. And for a coach, when you see now you got your first winning streak, how big can this be from just a confidence standpoint? Yeah, I think it, you know, I mean, winning in general is hard. And so I think when, when you realize that there's a lot of different ways you can do it, you know, you know, in, in Denver we needed to salt the game away on offense, you know, and – uh, last week was a different, you know, a different type of a game all in ge in general. And then today, you know, we played a little bit of field position at the end. The defense came up big. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, it, you, you 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 have to find new ways to win every week. You're never going to win the same way. And I think the resiliency of our team, uh, the mindset that they have, the demeanor that they come into the building with, um, you know, it's that's that's why you improve. That's why you have a chance in close games. Josh, how relieving is it to sit in the back to your to your Okay, sorry. Yep. Um, how relieving is it to sit in your seat and have a guy like Daniel Carlson go out last week and have an uncharacteristic game, but again come in and come into today, be called on time and time again when drive stalled. Kinda of how relieving is it to have a guy that's able to shake off a game like last week? I mean I I think we have, you know, um, the best kicker in the NFL and so, you know, to <clears throat> To, to have that feeling week in and week out of practice and you watch him do his job and you come, you know, you come to the stadium on game day and you know that if you need a big kick or, um, you know, something else, you know, nobody talks about his placement of the ball and the kickoffs or, you know, what he does in that regard to try to limit returners and all the rest of it. But uh, Daniel is a, an elite player at his position and, uh, I have tremendous confidence in him, regardless of the situation, um, you know, or or what has happened in the recent future, her recent past. You know, I just, you know, I, I would give him the ball, you know, 100 out of 100 if it was uh, the game on the line. <clears throat> uh, Josh, uh, you're halfway through your second season now. Or almost halfway? halfway through, almost halfway through it. Holy cow. I'm wondering, like a, th uh, a third. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm nitpicking you. Go ahead. How would you uh, assess um, – your performance at reshaping this team and where this team is at at this point. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't really think it's fair for me to do that. At, you know, at this point, look, we know where we're at. You know, where our record is, what it is. Um, you know, we 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 kind of battle and scrap and claw and um, you know try to win without scoring twenty plus points, which is crazy. You know, so I mean, you know, we we we, we can do a lot of things to make life a little easier on ourselves, and that's what we're going to work. Uh, work on going forward, but I don't think right now is the time to kind of measure, um, you know, what we are, where we're going to be. I uh, hope our best football is um, way out in front of us, you know, clearly. And I think I got a group of guys in the locker room that work hard every week, and that gives us a chance to get better. We'll do two more, Vinny and then Deshaun. Uh, I know it's early. Um, first of all, Brian was brought in, you know, for one of the reasons was to do what he did today, come off the bench in case <laughs> something like that happened. Um, but does anything change if Jimmy can't go uh, next week in terms of how you might approach it? I know it's early. And yeah, a lot it's of, early. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. I mean, we'll have to. Well, like I said, I think there's a lot of balls up in the air right now relative to Jimmy and you know that whole situation, and we'll just see. You know, um, you know, have a little patience here. You know, for ourselves and just kind of see what the um, you know the report is going to be, and and uh, you know, 
I'm hoping for the best, obviously, like we all are. So I don't know exactly where it's at, and we'll find out more, and then obviously try to make the best decision we can for the team. Uh, obviously, because Jimmy's had a couple injuries so far, you've gotten to see all three quarterbacks play. Um, you know, if you do have to make a decision, how helpful is that to kind of be able to evaluate how they perform this season? Yeah, I think that's you know, in any situation at any position, I think it would be helpful if you. You know, not only saw him in the preseason, but you've actually seen him in live action in a, in a game and in a close game, you know. So, uh, Brian, you know, today and obviously Aiden in L.A. So, um, you know, that's helpful. Um, certainly, um, I'm hoping for a um, healthy quarterback room in general, you know, and uh, thought Jimmy was doing some good things, obviously, before he, he got twisted or hit there uh, towards the end of the second quarter. So, um, we'll just patiently see kind of what this is going to be, and then we'll uh, make the best decision we can. Good to go. Okay. Back to our Michigan State days. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, Brian, congratulations on your Thanks. first win as a Raider. Uh, two quick questions. Number one, the, to come in and to watch how this defense has won you the yeah. last two games, would you talk about the grittiness, the blue-collar lunch pill approach of your defense, please? Well, I think for me, you know, obviously I didn't play the first half, but I sat there and watched them play. And, and when I knew that I was going in, I thought, okay, you know what, just, you know, complete the balls that you see out there. The defense is doing a great job. So they gave me, you know, that confidence to go out there and not try to force anything, not try to do anything outside of my abilities. And, and that at playing quarterback, when you have that, that gives you a lot of confidence. They've done, they did a great job. Josh's offense traditionally thrives in the red zone, and it's struggling a little bit. Can, is there something you can put your finger on, or is it just maybe a multiplicity of things? I mean, I could have made a better throw to Devontae down there, definitely let him touch the ball. Same thing with Jacoby. Um, but like I said, you know, knowing the, the situation, our, the way our defense is playing, um, you know, I wasn't going to let them touch the ball. And, and that was the mentality I had. And unfortunately, it got a little closer at the end, but, you know, they came up big again. And it's something that, you know, we can keep building on that is complimentary football. We've been talking about that. Look, the defense is playing good. You know, don't put them on a short field. Don't put them in a bad situation. And especially coming into a game like that with the emotions that I had, obviously going against a team that, you know, I've been a part of for a lot of years. Um, it gave me the confidence to just be smart and, you know, take the throws that were there. And, you know, they, they came up big at the end. Uh, Brian, you guys found out that Jimmy wasn't going to come back in at halftime. Did that make it any easier for you to get ready to go out there, kind of having that halftime period and not having to be in the flow of the game? I mean, it gives you some chance to, you know, take some snaps with the center. I mean, I haven't taken a snap with Andre James in probably three weeks. So, you know, it gives you a little bit of that time to, all right, you know, refocus, get some snaps, get some throws. Um, you know, so obviously, you know, a little more time than having in the flow of the game. But... You know, it is what it is. That's part of the job. We've talked about this a lot of times, you know, with the media. You know, ask me, you know, what is it? Well, you always got to be ready. You never know. Brian, you've obviously been in this situation before. How, how was important was that when you got the call to go in? Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's my 15th year. I've pretty much seen all the situations, and really what it comes down to is playing football. You know, regardless of the situation, um, obviously I've, I've played in this offense for a long time, and like I said, the defense was playing great, which gave me the confidence to go out there and just be, you know, making sure that I'm making good throws, making good decisions, and uh, the offense aligned did an incredible job. I mean, you know, blocked really well, run game, pass game, and that gives you a lot of confidence too. All right, thanks. Oh, sorry. All right, just... Uh... About the log pass to Tucker, mm -hmm. the uh, log post that you hit, um, <clears throat> what did you see that made you believe you could make that play? Well, I think, given, you know, yeah. what they were covered in. Yeah, I mean, having been there for the last, you know, seven years, I know a lot of times on third downs they want to take away your best players. And, you know, for us that would be Devontae and, and Jacoby. And that was something we were keyed in on. It's something that – you know, I've seen in practice over the years a lot of times. And so I was just waiting to see, you know, were they going to do that? You know, because you never know when it's going to come up. It's usually sometimes in the red area, sometimes in the field. And, uh, you know, Trey's worked his butt off. Um, I think everybody in that room has a lot of confidence in him. You see his speed. And um, that's a play that we've kind of, you know, had in our pocket for a while. And it's just a matter of the right coverage. And, you know, he executed it perfectly. So, um, you know, he's a guy that, <clears throat> you know, puts in a lot of hard work for a rookie. Same thing with Michael Mayer. Um, and those guys, you know, coming along, obviously, you know, breeds confidence in them and, and the rest of the offense. Great. You guys all set? Thanks, Thank Brian. You, Brian. Yeah.